Hey, what's up, guys? Um, this is a special Days of Our Lives review. I wanted to do um, just talking about Wednesday's episode when they were focusing on the Horton legacy of uh, the house and everything. I was just going over my notes um, before I was going to do the review, and I was like, you know what? This deserves its own special video. So, um, so here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I just love this episode. I just thought it was beautifully written and it definitely teaches us or reminds some fans of the history of the Hortons. Like, you know, I've been watching this show almost 24 years and some of these people and um, some of the stuff that I didn't even know about or I forgot about. It's been so long. And I think it was just beautiful that, you know, Days was able to do that. And I love the fake flashbacks with the younger um, actors playing t um, Alice and Tom. Um, so they started that back in 1930 through 1935. Um, just back um, mixed in with um, what's going on currently. And I just loved, you know, how they made it look like it was old film back in the day. I was like, that's beautiful. The beautiful coloring and stuff, even though it looked like modern day Salem. <laughs> but I thought that was really good. Um, <clears throat> and just how they transitioned from um, being newlyweds to popping out. I, I, I totally forgot that they had five kids. <laughs> Some of them I remember I never met. I don't know if they just weren't on the show at the time or they passed before I started watching. Uh, and their flirting was so cute. They were just talking to each other, just always just sitting like they're having a picnic all the time. Really cool. And then, you know, them watching the um, construction of their house that they even realized it was going to be their house uh, <clears throat> eventually. Um, yeah, and um, Alice was upset about the house being sold. And Tom's like, oh, uh -huh. yeah, it's all because I bought it. <laughs> I was like, it's just so sweet. Can we talk about Tom? Was clock back in the day? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um. Tom had passed away before I started watching, but I did see, um, Alice for a little while. Um. Oh, she was just so sweet. Such sweet. It was um her. Speaking of which, her funeral was very beautiful. But I just loved it. And <clears throat> before they moved into the house, Alice had already had the ornaments for, um him for her tom and their kids at the time so that's like started just right as they're about to move into their house I'm like, mm -hmm. and um the ornaments were saved thank goodness but i'll talk about more than that in a little bit but yeah when they bought the house and got the keys and they went inside and tom carried her over the threshold <laughs> i just thought it was so cute and realized the house was like way bigger without all that furniture <laughs> I was like, I forget, you know, how big houses can look without, you know, a bunch of furniture around. Um, and that couch that a lot of people talk crap about. It does look like a very uncomfortable couch, but <clears throat> it just looked beautiful. And I just love what Alice says, you know, but Tom said that we're home or whatever. And she says, a house is just brick and stone. Only love can make it a home. And I was like, I don't know if she meant to rhyme there, but it works. Is that when somebody put that in a song? <laughs> but I just thought it was really cute. I think that they did a very beautiful job with the storyline. Um, the storyline. With this, <laughs> well, it was tied to the storyline of the Wharton House burning down because of Clyde. But <clears throat> it was a really great focus um, on the Hortons. And with everything going on with the show, it was... Um, Good to see that they, you know, still talk about family and have family moments. And <clears throat> I thought um I thought it was beautifully written and stuff. I think it was the best episode of the week. Um, oops, spoiler alert. Um <laughs> it's the best episode they've had in a while, definitely. But um let's talk about modern May Salem with Julie, Doug, and Maggie. Um, <clears throat> they were talking, they, yeah, they started at the Kiriakis mansion, then they're talking about, you know, the firefighter said it was okay for them to go through the house and assess the damage, see, you know, if anything was salvageable and stuff, I'm like, I don't think that little room is, but, um, we shall see. So, yeah, they go to the house and just looking around, just, I was just like, oh, Lordy, they did a really good job <laughs> with that site, definitely. 
Um, for me, a lot of people are upset about the house. And I'm like, I understand, you know, history and stuff. And yeah, it's a little sad, um, especially after hearing all the history about the house and stuff. Um, uh, um, but I think it was just a way to rebuild the set. I don't know. It, it was an old set, so it was just a way to redecorate, modernize it and everything. But I think it'll be backed up before the... Um, 65 year anniversary coming up in November, so I think it'll be back up before then and look good as new. But a firefighter came in, it's like okay, it's random, and um, he goes and picks up the chair. And Tom's chair is it's okay, <laughs> everything else looks like crap in that living room, but the chair is so perfectly fine, <laughs> yeah, and um. <clears throat> It was like, um, the firefighter was like, yeah, Tom left it for Alice. And Joel was like, how do you know that? And takes off the helmet. And it's Lucas. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so sweet. And can we talk about how hot Lucas looked in a firefighter suit? Whew. I think he found his new, um, <laughs> his new profession <laughs> for when he's all done with this, um, um, <clears throat> jail stuff. <laughs> um. Yeah, so Lucas just feels, um, Julie and Maggie, um, they're, they're all happy to see him. They think that, they, they, like, did you work out of prison? <laughs> He's like, no, I didn't. Um, I just, um, well, he left out a lot of details, but basically just summed it up as, like, he's in a, um, a special, re um, He's re he was released under special circumstances. And he says that, you know, they're not able to tell anybody what's going on. But okay, under wraps, shoot. So, we'll see how well that goes. But, um, <laughs> and somebody already knows where Lucas is staying. So, I'm trying to figure out who, who that was that exposed him. Yes, well, found out a little bit later down the road. Huh. But Lucas was talking about Alice and about, you know, the first time that Alice um let him call her grandma. I'm like, oh, and they, I was like, oh, I love that. And I think that might have been before my time of watching, or that was just like way back in the day. <laughs> so I wouldn't remember those scenes probably. And they flash back to young Lucas. I was like, oh, he's still so adorable back then. <clears throat> and I just thought that was so cute. <laughs> Alice. I mean, seriously, she's like the sweetest, probably the sweetest soap, not just on days, but I think soaps in general. She's just like the sweetest character. And she's one of those characters that is really, really sweet, but not annoyingly sweet. She's like one that you could just like really love. She's like everybody's grandma. <laughs> That's all. She just like welcomed him into the family. Because um, <clears throat> his dad. Now think about it. Does Dad have an affair with Kate? I can't remember exactly, but um, but was it known that um, he was Bill's biological son until down the line after uh, um after Lucas came to town or whatever. But anyways, um, they were there. Then John, Melina, Kate, and Roman, Chad, Leo, Thomas all showed up. Um, the only Horton in town that didn't show up that was Sarah. She was. I guess, <laughs> standing by her man. <laughs> but that was fine. I, I was cool with everything that um was going on in the show. Um, John and Marlena went to the pub to get some coffee and donuts <laughs> to take to the Horton house. And Kate and Roman, um, they brought some donuts as well. Now I think about it, how did Kate and Roman get there before John and Marlena? Or am I remembering that wrong? But I swear, I swear that um, Kate and Roman got there first. <clears throat> yeah, but um, before Chad and Thomas got there with Leo, um, they went to the spectator office, and Leo had his little racket, and he was bouncing the ball up, and he was counting for some reason. <laughs> it's Leo, you know, nothing. It's Leo. It makes sense. Suddenly, so, Thomas interrupts um, when they come in, and Leo's, he's not mad, he's just disappointed that he got his count interrupted. <laughs> but the good news is Tom, um, Thomas, he left his um, cards there, so he got his card collection. I was, oh, I was just worried because he mentioned that last week, 
Um, unfortunately, they didn't say anything about the um, Abby's picture, so hopefully there's some of Abby's pictures are on uh, uh, digital copies. <laughs> but um, Thomas was out of the room with, Tom, with um, Chad and Leo was talking, and um, Chad, you know, Leo calls him Chadwick. I just love that he calls him that. <laughs> and, Le and Chad's not even annoyed by that anymore. <laughs> Okay. And I just loved how Leo was just so sweet to Chad. And Orton's as well. It's just like, Leo found a heart? <laughs> like, what are these, these villains finding hearts? You know, Tracy on General Hospital found a heart too. <laughs> Anyways, but Chad, um, <clears throat> he was blaming himself for the fire. And Leo's like, what? And Chad Philemon's like, yeah, it was Clyde's fault. Um, he did it because he ran an article. And Chad's like, Leo's like, you didn't know that he was going to do that. And Chad's like, mm -hmm. basically, Clyde said that, <laughs> that he was going to do something. But um, Chad printed it anyways. Um, and Everett didn't get any backlash for that. So it makes me wonder, is he working with Clyde? Who knows? Maybe he's one of Clyde's long lost sons or something. You know, days of our lives. Always adding to other people's families. <laughs> but um, Leo was like, you know, you're just doing your job, and you would do anything for your kids. You know, um, he shouldn't blame himself for the fire. He would walk through fire for his kids, and he literally did. He was really trying really hard to put out that fire. Um, Julie had to pull his ass out of there because they already the kids already lost one parent. They don't need the other one to be charged a bit. So. But, um, <clears throat> there, um, I thought it was funny how, um, Thomas had a loose tooth and, um, Leah was going to pay him for it. And, um, Chad was calling him the tooth fairy. <laughs> Reminded me of that story from, my, from like a couple, like a couple of years ago when, um, it was a year or two ago when Leo was staying in the, um, yeah, that's what happened. That's around the time, I think when Abby died, he was staying in the tunnels <laughs> and, um, Thomas found him and Leo lied and called, um, told him he was a tooth fairy. <laughs> I remember that. That was funny. But, um, Leo wanted to go to the Horton house as well. Like, mm -hmm. he, um, wants to hear about the Horton story and everything. I was like, oh, that's so cute. Um, oh, what? Oh, okay, that's when. <laughs> yeah, Leo wanted to know about the history of the Horton House and everything. Yeah, eventually he does an article about it. So they go into the Horton House. I was just reading, uh, of course, jumping up. Well, actually, this is going backward. No, this is, this is going down. Oh, Lordy. Okay. It's Roman and Kate. Oh, that's when um, Roman and Kate showed up. Um, and Roman um, goes to the kitchen with Julie and Doug to check out the appliances, see what's still good. And I'm like, after the fire, I don't think I would want any of those appliances. <laughs> Unless for some miracle, the, the, even the toaster, throw it away. Um, <laughs> Donna and Marlena um, arrive at the donuts. And then um, Maggie mentions to Kate and Roman brought some too, and Marlena giggles because um, she knows that they brought the donuts. And I forgot they didn't get along, kind of. Um, I don't know what happened with Marlena and um, Julie. Why don't they like each other? Um, I mean, Mar Maggie and uh, Marlena. I don't remember why they don't like each other. But I remember somebody said that the actresses had some issues or something. I don't know, but you didn't think about it. I don't remember the last time they had scenes together. I think they've been around the same area at times, but not actually seen. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, it started with the, um, flashbacks. Marlena, when she first came to town, she was helping, um, she was helping Mickey. You know, they didn't go into details what was wrong with Mickey. And something I would have to Google, but, um, Tom and Alice were really sweet to her. And John and Marlena had lived next door to them. I was like, oh. I was like, um, trying to think, were they living there when I started watching? Because I swore that they had a house when I started watching. 
and the penthouse came later. I might be wrong. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, then, um, Chad and Thomas show up, and Chad lets, um, Lucas know that Leo's coming, so, you know, go upstairs, stay gone, <laughs> until he's gone, too. <laughs> but Leo's been, well, you know, Leo's been sweet lately, but, you know, just in case, just in case. Um, uh, <laughs> worry, and, um, yeah, Julie doesn't like that Leo's there, but then Leo's just, you know, it's like, he wants to know about the Horton family and maybe write an article about it, and Julie's kind of like, hmm. But then she's like, okay, but Chad has to sign off on it first, and Leo's like, deal. So, you know, Julie's just sitting there, it's going through the family tree, it's like, Oh, Lordy, this is like Tom and Alice, and then it's like 500. Everybody had like a bunch of kids and great. They just had like tons of, um, I think Leo said great, great grandkids. So um, that's where um, Eli and Lonnie's kid, um, Jules, and um, oh, Matt's gonna bug me. I know they're named after their grandparents, Jules, and um, it's not Jules and Abraham. Oh my gosh, that's gonna drive me crazy. Okay, that's gonna drive me crazy now. I'm gonna <laughs> um uh, that's gonna drive me crazy. Hold on, I'm gonna pause this and be right back. I'm back. It's like as soon as I hit pause, I remembered Jules and Carver. That was their name. That's their names. Uh, speaking of which, they're coming back next week as well. Um, so them and then Victoria are considered the great great grandkids. <laughs> Lordy, so she just like went all the way down. I'm like, well, some of these partners I've never met before. I'm never even heard of before. But, <laughs> Whew, Lordy, and yeah, I was like, I don't think I've met half of these people. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, some of them need to come back. I guess we, we need some Horton. I still don't believe that Abby's dead, so, you know, eventually she'll come back, I think. Come on, who dies, really dies on days of her lives? Unless the actor dies, yeah. I so I'm, I'm only convinced that Stefano and Victor will never come back. Everybody else, you know, I think it's gonna, um, I think it's gonna happen. <laughs> but, uh, Marlene, like I said, Marlene, I found the, our, um, the ornaments <laughs> in the attic, unscathed, and I'm like, they saved the ornaments. Thank goodness. <laughs> Cause that's what I was most upset about. All those ornaments. They're just like also beautiful and I just love all the designs and stuff. And I was like, I'm so jealous. I wanna make my own ornament. I just like, always felt that way, like every Christmas. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna be a whore. I get an ornament? You know, so that's why I was upset about the fires. Like, I didn't care about anything else. I just wanted the ornament. So, I'm glad those are, um, those are right. Especially the ones that Alice made. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lena said that started with Alice's grandma, mother, or grandma started that tradition. And she just carried it on with her family. Oh. <laughs> yeah, um... Then Leo got everything he needed and left and went to back to the office so Lucas could come downstairs. And um, Thomas was messing around with the fireplace for some reason. I don't know if he knew about the secret, um, the time capsule up there or not. But he was, I forgot what he had, but he was like knocking in the fireplace. And Chad was like, oh, leave that alone. I'm going to count. I'm like, Doc's not listening to you at all. Yeah, and it falls down. It just feels like it's in like this, like, really thick box. And they're trying to figure out how to open it. It says, um, Alice put it together in 1966, and they should, shouldn't open it until on or after 2016. And I'm like, well to open that thing. <laughs> so they're like, I'm um, thinking about a key and John's like, get a hammer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but we didn't get to see them open it. So I'm like, okay, they have to tell us what's in it. I, I, I want to see what's in there. <laughs> but then Maggie was talking to Julie because Maggie was like looking at the window the whole time, not paying attention to anything that was going on. <laughs> so Julie, um, talking to her, Maggie just flashes back to after Mickey died and 
she went to go talk to Alice. She was sitting in her chair, a chair that didn't burn at all. It just um, fell over. Apparently, I was like, "Oh Lord, he's taking it back." Uh, I love Mickey too. He was a really sweet guy. Um, sad when he left. <sighs> but lastly, you know, at the end, this brother that really got me too when Leo was typing up his um article. He um it was reading it out loud. And I like the address, five, um, 545 Sycamore Street. I'm like, that's a cool name, Sycamore. Anyways, <laughs> I think that um, his um, article sounds so beautiful. I, I didn't write down everything he said. That was a lot of work. But um, if anything, um, it was at the very, very end. So, But um, I just loved all the pictures they were showing. Like, <laughs> I was like, my girl Lexi, I'm just so sad. Her and Abe were just so cute and happy together. Oh, and then the flashback of Lumi, little <laughs> young Lucas and Sammy. <laughs> oh, lordy. And they showed um, the actors, the um, original actors or the actors that used to play characters. Like they played, um, they showed pictures of Jason Cooks, Sean, and uh, Melissa Reeves as Jennifer. And um, Kate Mancy um, as Abigail, and um, they also show a little picture. Yeah, when um, the Sean picture was with Bo Hope, and then they had JT in their arc. Oh Lord, it just it's just just making a girl cry. <laughs> it's like it was definitely um could produce some tears on that episode. But like I said, it was a very beautiful episode, and um. So if you want some a little history lesson and you enjoy some flashbacks and uh, just want to go down memory lane for any old-time day fans like myself, that's definitely an episode you should check out. If you missed anything else this week, you know, don't miss that one. But anyways, that's all I had to say about that episode. I will still be doing a review for the other four episodes for this week. Um, so, uh, check back for those. Those will be posted Saturday afternoon, along with all the other reviews. <laughs> and, um, that's all I had as well. I will I have to do my regular stuff. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video. Even if it's just to make fun of the fact that, yes, I will cry over pictures. <laughs> I, I can't help it, especially if I watch late at night. <laughs> That's when I'm most vulnerable to cry. Um, <laughs> and also, oh, also, let me know in the comments below, how did you like this episode? What you like? If you didn't like the episode, let me know what you didn't like. And I will see you guys for the rest of the days with you. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your weekend. Love you guys. Bye.